Same old, let's see if we've got some volume. Can you hear me? And we'll get a couple thumbs up this morning. Let me see here. Just a minute, we want to make sure that our phone is working here. So we got a couple on there. If you could just give me a thumbs up for an audio test, I want to make sure that you guys can hear me this morning. Yep. Okay, let's see if we can get some of those. Alright, we'll get started here in just a minute. A couple. See if you can give me a thumbs up if you can hear this. I want to just make sure before we get started in our message. Go. Let's see. A couple thumbs up. I don't really have notifications on here. Okay. Yes, let's see what we've got here. We got a couple. We do have thumbs up? Okay, I'm not seeing them here on my computer, but maybe we got them over there on the camera. Um, yes, a few seconds ago. Okay, here we go. Lots of thumbs up. <laughs> All righty. Let me pull this music down here. We'll get started. We got some people coming on. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a blessed day. It's a great day to be alive in the Lord. We're excited about what's going to take place today. So let me see here. A little delay on here. Are you good on the camera? You good? Okay. All right. Let me pull this music down just a little bit. Going up, there we go. Okay, got a lot of folks on here. Okie doke. So if the audio is good, and we'll pull the music down, we'll get started here in just a second. Alright, praise God. Alrighty, I'll. I'll turn my wife loose. Thank you, Angel. Love you. There we go. All right. Well, for some reason, I don't see the notifications on here, so we're just going to go for it. I want to say welcome to Western Harvest Ministries. My name is Scott Mendes, and uh, man, I am so excited to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is our fourth week of broadcasting from home. We're coming to you from Weatherford, Texas, here at our ranch and our home in Weatherford. So, uh, many of you know we go out in the summertime and we evangelize and we've got a wonderful uh, ministry team with USA Yo and the FCA Cowboy Chapter. Uh, it's always exciting to do the work of the Lord, to be with other athletes and men of God. And uh, as we uh, conduct school assemblies and speak at universities uh, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's always a wonderful time. Uh, this morning, and based on the situation, as you know, we're, we're all at home still on the partial stay-at-home orders. Uh, I want to uh, continue to ask you guys to be faithful and, and do what we need to do. Um, I know there's a lot of pushback on our freedoms. Maybe our message this morning would uh, address some of that, and, uh, and I'm excited. The Word of God is pure, it is true, it is holy, and we can bank on it. So I want to uh, give you some thanks. I taught this message uh, briefly, but not in its entirety. And so I have some statistics this morning that I think will be a blessing uh, to, to kind of go over with you guys. And like usual, I will read a little story that relates to what we want to talk about. 
so that's real exciting uh, to, to be able to kind of open things up a little bit. I don't tell a lot of stories, but I am just excited. As you can see, I got my straw hat on. I kind of let my beard grow back out. I, I got outnumbered. My kids and my wife really like that, so I'll, I'll bring it back. It's good for acting and playing around in some media stuff. But God is good. Amen. I'm so excited. I had a chance to just listen to some of his worship this morning. And uh, I know we don't have the ability to do that. Maybe someday I'd be able to uh, let you listen to a little bit more music. And I don't know how long we're going to be doing these broadcasts. But we'll do them as long as they're needed. And I know the Word of God needs to go forth no matter where the children of God are and the men of God are. So I'm reminded even of Paul. His greatest writings were from prison. And uh, so, you know, we, we feel persecuted a little bit in that way here with what's going on in our world today. But anyway, having said that, thank you so much for joining us and being with us today as we get into God's Word. I'm always watching my time. I know the last couple weeks were a little bit long. We'll try to keep it a little bit shorter. I do want to say this. Last week and the week before, uh, the video broadcast reached thousands upon thousands of people. And not only my message, but the church itself was going forth on the airways and just taking back the prince of the airways, Satan. You know, he uses media always uh, to destroy people's lives. But God was out there and people were broadcasting and great things are happening. I know many people came into the kingdom of God last year uh, or last weekend. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, challenging times draw people closer to God. So anyway... I want to pray with you this morning. If you'll agree with me that today's reading of His Word and the message that I've got prepared for you guys will really bless you and challenge us. Uh, we're not here to perform or just to look good or draw any attention uh, to me personally. This is all about Jesus, our King. King of kings, Lord of lords, and He is our Savior, and He loves us. And when we read that Word, we equip ourselves. Amen? So God is good. Let's go to the Father in prayer this morning. And then we'll get into the Word of God. Amen. Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, your Son. Father, God in the flesh. Father, we thank you that this week after Easter is just an incredible week, Lord. We know that springtime is here and straw hat weather. And Lord, the, the grass is growing and there's just so much going on in our world today. And I ask, Father God, that as we press into you and draw near to you as your word says you would draw near to us so father right now I pray for every need over this telecast Lord God that people that are going through things father I know them personally people have had loved ones pass away both of the virus and of natural things and Lord it's just a challenging time in the beginning of this new 2020 year but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world father God and so right now, Lord, I loose my faith with my brothers and sisters, and I ask that your word go out to do what it's called to do, Father. Your word promises that it would accomplish what you send it to do, and Lord, that is to minister to all nations, making disciples, Father God. And I, I love you this morning, and I know those watching and tuned in this morning love you as well, Father. So, Lord, just let the power of your word sink into our hearts, Lord, that we can be rootly, uh, rooted and grounded in your love and your provision and your guidance. So we lift up those with major needs, Lord. We ask for financial um, blessings upon them and thanks to help them with their bills, Lord God. And also, Lord, uh, that you'll just help us to be have. Uh, hope and an assurance in you father so lord we love you we praise you lord god we honor you this morning lord we lift up your name father that all men may be drawn unto yourself this morning father by the reading of your word we ask these things in your son's name jesus christ amen and amen praise god well, I'm excited uh, once again to be with you, and I believe that we've got a great message this morning. Um, I want to ask you, you know, if you have your Bibles, get them out. A lot of times I cut and paste and get these scriptures where we don't have to turn and take a lot of time to do that. But again, I believe that this message this morning was really laid on my heart uh, in the essence of, you know, everybody right now is going to believe a report. And so the word believe just kept coming to my heart. And as I looked at what I wanted to share with you, I realized that this day and age right now in America, and even though some of these statistics are from just a few years ago, it, it's probably done nothing but gotten a little bit broader, a little bit worse, if you will. 
Because when we're talking about the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, and, and believing those things as opposed to what the world is sending our way and the news reports and the things that we get access to through the Internet, uh, it, it, it's no wonder that the, that the Prince of the Air, Satan, has used the tools to bring fear and to press his agenda into our life. And so I want to talk to you this morning about believing. What do you believe? How do you believe? And, and are you believing correctly? Because when we believe correctly, we produce victory in our life. And we know that believing is directly tied to our thinking, and our thinking is directly tied to our actions, and our actions are tied to our destiny. Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning a little bit about believing and, and, and what we're believing, and what we should be believing in these very times. Because I know that God has commissioned us to be good stewards and to be ambassadors for his kingdom and how are we going to do that at least we be prepared and so this morning I pray that this broadcast would prepare us and challenge us and equip us for God's very best in your life that is that is what I believe that I would like to do this morning is to is to help us to discern uh, what is good and, and what has been coming at us and how we can defend ourselves and put up our full armor of God and, and press into God and not believe a lie. Because when we believe lies, they also produce as well. So let me read this short little story this morning. And, and I know I'm not the best reader, but I want to read this. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, so I think you'll really like it. And, uh, and I know that it, it, it applies directly to... Now again, these little stories that I read are from my grandfather when he passed away. He had left a devotion on his desk, and, and I read it every day, and I'm just blown away how God speaks to me through that. And so this morning, Titus 2.1 says this, it says, Knowing what you believe, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. You may not think that doctrine is important, but it is. You see, pilots fly by the laws of aerodynamics, and surgeons operate by doctrines of medical science. Aren't you glad that they think that doctrine is important? Let me illustrate what I mean. A, psycho a psychology student in the Army was given uh, kitchen duty, so he decided to test the response of different groups of soldiers to apricots. First, he took the negative approach. He said, while serving, he says, You don't want apricots, do you? And 90% of them said no. Then he tried the pro positive approach. And he said this, you do want apricots, don't you? And over half of them said yes. With the third group, he tried the either-or technique. Would you like one dish of apricots or two uh, apricots? And 40% took two dishes and 50% took one. The point is this, if you've had no doctrine, if you have no doctrine of your own, you are at the mercy of of everyone else's. Let me say that again. If you have no doctrine of your own, you are at the mercy of everyone else's. Now listen to Paul's challenge to Timothy. And he said, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and be in careful instruction. For the time will come when men, when men will not put up with sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 and 3. When your feelings won't sustain you, your beliefs will. Let me say that again. When your feelings will not sustain you, your beliefs will. And for one of those is built on emotions, your feelings. And of course, the other should be founded on the eternal word of God. And that's kind of what I was saying. And it simply says, get into his book today, the Word of God. I love reading those because they're a lot of fun, and they just kind of open up our hearts and our minds for what we want to talk about. Your emotions versus, um, you know, your, your belief system. And I want to speak to us today to make sure that whether it's challenging times, good times, prosperous times, um, depression times, whatever it is, your belief system can affect everything that you are going through. And so I want to speak to us today about that, your belief. What do you believe? 
How should we believe? What can we believe? So if you'd like to turn there, I'm going to read a little overview, but if you'd like to turn there, we're going to read this morning from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. So while you get in your Bible, 1 Peter 3, 13 is a foundational scripture this morning. I want to ask a couple of questions to us uh, in, in, in lines of what we're going to talk about. First of all, a large percentage of Americans no longer believe in the truth of God's Word. I don't know about you, but when I read that and I think about that, it's pretty obvious whenever we're under persecution um, that this is a true statement. And so as, as Americans, we've been given the liberty and the freedom to choose both from God and as Americans by living here where many people have shed their blood and our Constitution has given us privileges. Uh, and you know as well as I do, folks, people have twisted those freedoms. They've interjected their own opinions into the Constitution. And I just want to say this. I believe that God's Word is in the Constitution and won't work without it. And I believe that our enemies know that truth too. And that is why they try to destroy it. That is why they try to interject uh, and come against where the power is. See, I think that, that people come against uh, not so much if you believe in God, but you start walking with His Son, Jesus, and, and you're going to be persecuted because that is where the power is. An example of that would be when you... Uh, step out in faith and you begin to have a prayer life and you pray every morning things will come against you why because there's a force in the spiritual realm that wants to stop you and hinder you from being victorious in Christ Jesus amen a large percentage of Americans no longer believe in the truth of God's word most think that any belief is acceptable as long as it satis uh, satisfies those who hold those views. Now, I wrote down right here, politically correctness. You see, everybody wants to have their opinion of what they want to believe. And even the world says that we should believe this way. And if you don't, we're going to ostracize you. We're going to persecute you. We're going to come against you. Uh, we're going to overtake you. But, but I want to tell you that when you're in God's army and you're believing with Him, He's empowering you through the Holy Spirit to be able to endure whatever has come against you. The Bible says, uh, uh, no temptation has overtaken you, that but which is common to man. And so he gives you the, uh, 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 the strength to do that. So, as a result, people no longer have a clear sense of right and wrong. Man, if that was ever a true statement today that we live in this world, it is true. People no longer have a clear sense of what right is wrong. And what has happened? Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he pollutes the water with just a few drops. And before you know it, unknown, if you leave it there long enough, it does, it decays the rest, and it hinders the rest of that, uh, whatever that is that you're trying to contaminate. So Satan has tried to contaminate the world that we live in. Amen? So then we have violence, we have greed, we have immorality, and those things are rampant in our culture. You see, however, God has a standard uh, that He has, God has a standard, a standards that haven't changed. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come unto the Father but by me. But He said, my word shall abide, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am the same in Hebrews. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. These are the things that we can believe upon, not that God is over there and we're here and we can't get to him. That's, that's a religion. We are in Christ Jesus is in us. He has established his laws on the tablets of our heart. He has an omnipresence in our life through the Holy Spirit to, to, to give us a conscience that says this is right or this is wrong. And our free will has to align with the better part of that. That if God said it, then I believe it. And His Word is the highest supreme governing authority over my life, over my mind, and over my everything that I'm entrusted to. My family, my ministry, my, my cars, horses, whatever those things are. That's how we should have 
the, the right belief system in our lives. So his standards, say that, say God's standards have not changed. See, we can take that to the bank. Amen? The consequences of sin now and in eternity. When there's sin in our life, at some point we are going to have to, uh, we're, we would be dealt with. And, and what that does is God loves us if it's unconfessed sin. He certainly loves us, but he, he, he helps us to understand in our conscience that we have to deal with that. We have to come with God. I believe the enemy has lied to those and said that you need to clean yourself up before you come to God. And that would be inaccurate as well. So know what you're fighting. Know what battlefield you're on. And know what your equipment is. What is, what is your resources to use against the devil? To, to, to be victorious in life. And of course, that is God's word. Uh, it is vitally important to base your and mine's belief on the Word of God. That is what we are to believe so that we will not be left in a, uh, a dark world, but yet we would be a light. We would have hope instead of hopelessness. We would be encouraged instead of discouraged, and we would have victory. Now let's go back and read this. 1 Peter 3, verses thir uh, 13 through 16. I'm going to read it right here. 1 Peter 3, verses 13. Just kind of a foundational passage of Scripture here. It says this, And who is he who harmed you? If you become followers of what is good, but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. Let me read that again. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of the threats, nor be troubled, of their threats, nor be troubled. But, and this is what I want to go to, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Wow. That right there is a powerful verse of scriptures that we can, I guess, equip ourselves with. So if you've ever been persecuted for righteousness sake, the word of God says that you are blessed. Now we don't go out and try to put God to the test and stir up these circumstances. We wouldn't do that. But if and when these circumstances come against us, we should be ready and prepared to preach the gospel in and out of season. A workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? And, and that's what that helps us in our belief system. Did you hear verse 15? It said... Be sanctified, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanctify. Be holy, even as the Lord is holy. Put God in such a place in your life that He is higher than any of your hobbies, any of your sports, any of your covetousness, any of your uh, things that you uh, have in, in place of God. Because what happens, those things would then become... Uh, strongholds in our life and that builds a barrier between you and your relationship with God it would be dealt with now I want to be honest right here in this part of this message as I was looking at all this I felt that even though we're talking individuals and I'm ministering I felt that this word of God also translates into our country the covenant that God has with America and because of those idols and because of those things, we're seeing now where the Lord is allowing us to recharge. And I don't want to go as far as to say that God has caused this virus, all these things. But I can tell you that God certainly can use it. And I can tell you that God certainly knows who are his faithful children, who has come to him in a pure heart and said, Lord Jesus, I love you. I surrender all that I am, all that I have to you. God knows those people in this world. Amen. And he's separating 
if you will, even the sheep and the goat nations. And, and who's going to align with his beliefs? You see, when I died to my selfish ambitions and my old ways, I, I, I was resurrected in the newness of life to live and to, and to serve him. And so when, when something dies at that point, when something dies, it brings into itself a new life a new life in Christ Jesus, a new country. So where we're sitting today with all of us going through this pandemic and, and circumstances and uncertainties and all these things in our life, as we're going through those things, um, we can have victory. We can be at peace. We can know that in Christ Jesus we believe His doctrine. We don't believe the world. We don't believe religion. We're talking about a covenant. And in the covenant, there are promises that we live by. As we live by those promises, amazing things can happen in our life. So what do Americans believe? Here's some things that Americans believe today. And this is the part that, statistically speaking, have been uh, maybe researched three or four years back. I'm not exactly. But as I saw them and I wrote them down and worked with them, I, I think they're important for us to hear. Only one-third of adults believe the Bible is fully inspired Word of God and that it can be taken literally. Only one-third of Americans still believe in the power of God's Word and that it is in its highest authority over our life and that it can be uh, literally believed word for word. This is something that I believe that we have to deal with as God's children on this earth. God can deal with it. God is dealing with it. But he wants you and I to do our part. And when we love him, when we become a light, the Bible says you don't put a bucket on top of a light. We are a city that cannot be hidden. And so our light shines that our Heavenly Father may be glorified through our lives. And so we want to become that light and we want to give God. So let's change that from one-third of Americans to three-quarters of American or 100% of Americans uh, love God and believe this word literally, word for word. Now, I believe that some of that is a direct attack when we're not teaching the word of God in our schools. We're not uh, walking in that. Uh, we try to give our children more than we had, uh, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of things that have happened in this world. And I believe that every passing decade, it's been a watered-down scenario of God's powerful word that first blessed this country but here's the things folks we have the ability to usher in through our prayer through our faith in God one of the most uh, amazing revivals that the the second or third biggest revival of all times can take place right now before he returns because I believe that God has got a lot to deal with his children uh, believers and unbelievers alike on this earth so don't just say I'm preaching doom and gloom. I'm preaching with every part that there is an opportunity for us to do our part that God has clearly shown there will be revival. And revival starts in your heart. It starts in your family, your community, and then your nation, and then around the world. And then Jesus shall come. And, and all these things will happen. So let me keep moving here. More than half of the adults surveyed believe that a good person can earn his place in heaven. I want to tell you that's that's deception. Deception is 99% truth with 1% lie. No man can earn his place in heaven. Let me read this. But scripture teaches us otherwise because we are born with a sin nature. Now if you're not a Christian yet, you need to understand as we're born, we have a sin nature. The sin nature is overridden as we have the new nature as we accept Jesus Christ. So if you've only known about Jesus or you played church or you've only done certain things in your life, you've never encountered and fall on your knees with God, that new life is just something that is, is, is really laying dormant inside of you at that time. And, and we want to bring that forth in our life. And so we want to be on fire for God, to be zealous and to have passion for Him. Because you can't earn your way to heaven. We have all been there. We all took that bait and cheese and that trap. And the enemy is just waiting for us to get into the jaws of his snares. But I want to tell you, you can't earn that. So, because we were born with a sin nature, Jesus' death was absolutely 
uh, purposeful and essential for us to enter into heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. So if Jesus doesn't die, we are always under the burden of trying to work our way to heaven in good works. But we can't get there. We must stop. We must fall humbly on our knees and ask Jesus to forgive us and to empower us to live a light, to be a light in this world. And, and he will not turn anybody away. I just want to say this. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've ever done in your life, you have never gone past the arm's reach of love of God. That, lo that God loves you enough he can grab you and get you right back into fellowship with him. But it all begins with your free will. It begins with how you're thinking. Have you been listening to the world system? Have you been listening to a lie? Were you taught false religion? Because the sound doctrine of God's word can, is a discerner of our thought and the intents of our heart. So let me move on. 42% of Americas believe that Jesus was merely human. And I know that there's a lot of false religions that say, well, Jesus was just a prophet, but he was not divine. He was not the son of God. But I want to tell you, he is divine. And he, and the rebellion, uh, and that he rebelled against the Father. So 42% of Americans believe that he was human, that he was not divine, and that he rebelled against the Father. And I want to tell you the power of the Trinity, the God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three of them are so important to do each of their jobs, but they are one. They are God, and they love us. Amen? So six out of ten adults don't even believe that Satan really exist, that he was merely a symbol of evil. And as a result, almost, uh, almost, it's almost impossible to identify him and to avoid that evil. So Satan, uh, without a doubt, and I want, I want to read this. I wrote down some things about, uh, well, I don't want to get too carried away. Let me, I, I guess this is a good part. I want to throw this in there. I just hand wrote these, but... Uh, I want to talk about the enemy for a second. What are some of the ways that the devil tries to tempt us? The devil always questions our identity. Do you know who you are? See, when you know you're a child of God, you're believing right. When you question your identity, you're believing wrong, and it's only Satan that brings a question mark. God always brings an exclamation point. Amen. Just remember that. I say that simply as a cowboy just to help myself in certain things. But I know there's no question mark with God. The only question is, is will I submit to his ways? And that he's a good God. His ways are in his word. And as I read them, I have the choice to apply them in my life. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. The devil tempts us to tempt God. A lot of times trying to get God to prove himself to us. God, if you do this for me, then I will serve you and I'll live for you. We can't have that first part in the second part because the reality is that we need God in our life. God has already proved himself through John 3.16 where he sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him would not perish but shall have an ever, uh, eternal life. That's God's proven to me. And so I don't need him to do some big, magnificent, move a mountain so that I can know that he's real. That makes me a doubting Thomas. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen than those that need to see all the time. We don't see in the natural eyes. We don't walk in the natural. We walk in the supernatural. We walk in the unseen and, and, and the things of God uh, in our life. Amen? Here's how, he tempts, here's how the enemy tempts us. He has fantasies and flirtations. And first of all, uh, first you allow it into your mind. See, there's that belief system. It's like your belief system should be the gate that guards your mind. The Bible even says in Proverbs that we are to guard our heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issue of life. Well, shouldn't we guard our minds? Shouldn't we be sanctified and guard uh, our relationship and our beliefs with God in our heart? So all these things need to be protected and guarded. Why? If it was not so, then why did God put it in His Word? He's telling us right there that we need to be alert. 
We need to be attentive. We need to be equipped. And that's what this is. So he, first of all, we allow it in our minds and then it begins to grow. Then, uh, then you begin to flirt with it and then you fall. One thing I noticed as I wrote that out is that it's a process. And that's what I meant about the water, the little drops of the enemy puts in the water and it begins to dilute it and pervert it all and, and, and pollute it. And so if you allow one negative thought into your mind in the course of a 24-hour day, you start to believe it or maybe you don't do something that you know you should be doing and at the course of a day turns into a week and a week turns into a month and then it becomes a habit and that habit is detrifying to your victory in your life in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we need to deal with it when it's in its earliest stage. Amen. What revelation. When that thought comes against your mind, you have the helmet of salvation on and you say, I cast that down in the name of Jesus because it's not God's word. I don't believe it. I won't act upon it. I shall not do it. And now we're living a, a life that is uncompromising and we live in victory. Amen. So it's awesome to see that God knew that we would be dealing with these things in our world and our family and our own heart. Remember, the heart is wicked and deceitful among all things. But that's the heart of, of, of stone. That was the heart before God gave me uh, a compassionate heart. I have a new heart today in Christ Jesus. And I try my best through the Holy Spirit to live as God's Word is the highest authority in my life. As I do that, He promises to be with me. He promises to bless me. He protects those things that are His and you are His. He loves you. No matter what you're dealing with right now, you can begin to put a guard around your mind and a gate on your heart. And you can begin to put God's child here. And, and you can begin to detect the lies. You can begin to, 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 to detect how much time that you're allowing yourself to watch or listen to partake in the culture rather than in the closeness of your loving Heavenly Father. Amen? He loves us. He wants us to be in there. i got to move on. 2 Peter 2.9 says this. It says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly from all temptations. The Lord God knows how to deliver um, the godly out of all temptations. Are you and I a godly person? I pray that we are today. I pray that this word will begin to sanctify us in our hearts to where we don't have to listen to negative, bad, and false reports producing a negative harvest of fear, doubt, unbelief, hopelessness, because it's the contrary. As a child of God, you shouldn't allow that into your life, into your heart, or in your minds. Amen? 2 Timothy 2.2 says this, says, Flee all youthful lusts. And that we are to run fast. We don't think the way we think when we were kids. We don't think the way that we thought before we were Christians. We think the way God has commissioned us in our life. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind on the things that are above. Amen? Uh, real quick, here are, here are a few steps that should help you. Uh, here are a few steps to help you. Number one, remember, if you are born again, you are are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 and verses uh, uh, 5.17. You are a new creation. You got to say that. You got to believe that. You got to walk that out, which means you're not going to do the former things that we used to have the lust of our flesh. We're not going to do those things. If, uh, repent is the change uh, the way you think. So when you repent and you rededicate your life or you come to the Lord the first time, repent doesn't just mean that you repent. It does mean to have a full turning away from and to move away, but you have to change your way of thinking. Amen? If you don't change the way you're thinking, whichever direction your feet are going, you will ultimately go backwards to where you came from because your thoughts are like seeds and they're going to put you back in that place you don't want to be. I experienced that so much when I was rodeoing. I didn't want to be at the tailgate party. I wanted to be used of God and, and, and to be a witness for Him. But yet when I was young and trying to come to the Lord, I didn't have character. I didn't have a commitment. 
I wasn't guarding my mind. I wasn't sanctifying my heart to the Word of God, and I would end up in places I didn't want to be. And so re uh, to repent is to change your thinking. Will you do that today? Change your thinking. Know who you are in Christ. Know that the curse is broken. You see, when we're not sanctified and we don't have the guard on our minds, we're living under an absolute curse. And I challenge you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, blessings and cursings, and read those chapters. Because it's very obvious how one would live separated from the relationship of his Lord. We don't have enough. We barely get by. Everything's falling apart. Uh, you know, we want to get ahead of God, so we just go in the credit card debt. We do all these things uh, to try to get this curse off of our life. But we're not doing what God first wanted. First, the covenant relationship with Him. Then the principles that we commit to will begin to be just like a seed. They're planted, they're watered, they're cultivated, and then they produce a harvest. And in that order, sometimes we get out of order. We get ahead of God, we get behind. But that order is how God brings things in our life. Amen? How do we break the cycle of the curse? Well, you get to sow the opposite uh, of what you were doing before. You do the opposite in the newness of God's Word. Amen? Um, you've got to identify with the new bloodline. You've got to understand, I am a new creation, that God lives in me. And then we don't retaliate. We also accept our personal responsibilities. Amen? We accept personal responsibilities. Now, I don't want to get sidetracked, but when I got on to the enemy, it's pretty obvious that I like to keep him in his place. And I want to show you some of the things that I walked through when I discovered in my testimony, many of you know watching this, it was all about Romans 12 and verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may test and prove what is that acceptable, perfect, and pleasing will of God. Folks, that was exactly what I needed when I was trying to live for God. And without, without the Lord showing me that, I had no idea that even renewing my mind was something that I had to do. I, I grew up, my mom was a pastor's daughter. My grandfather was a preacher, a powerful preacher. But at the same time, I didn't, I didn't know that. And I want to tell you today that we are responsible for renewing our mind. We're responsible for our thoughts. And don't let the enemy place a, a, a negative seed in your heart and your mind because it can creep up years down the road and break relationships and destroy things and then we have to go back and look and say what happened and I believe that God would show us and say this is where we got off course we allowed deception into our life amen uh, of those surveyed a majority of men and women 25 years old think that uh, all beliefs are equally valid. Now one thing I wrote on my notes here was I believe again that not teaching the Word of God is detriment and so when we send our children to universities and places that there's not a centerness of Christ and the presence of Christ then we just raise them up into this right here to where uh, it's a political correctness, it's a young generation and that next generation will be the ones that are leading this country today. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that God, I have a daughter. I have a son. My daughter's 16. My son's 13. My older son is 22. I know they have God in their heart, but I know that, that, that God is going to do a, a, a radical thing in the revival of this world for, for those young people that are searching for God as opposed to these kind of 25-year-olds uh, that think that, anything goes just whatever makes you happy come up with a belief and then believe it and and, and when that happens what happens is we, we're immobilized and we don't move forward and we're not victorious and it produces a sense of hopelessness they feel uh, they feel is rejected in school and well we see these things in school shootings and the crimes begin to increase because if you don't believe anything you'll fall for anything so let's teach our children and those that we love, 25, single adults, whatever uh, bracket that you may be in, demographic, let's teach them to love God, to guard their heart, to be diligent about what they believe, why they believe it, so that God can come into their life and, and, and mature them and to help them. Amen? 
Uh, some of the seminary teachers even teach our students today how to doubt the Word of God, how to have a debate with God. I debated with God, and if you're a Christian today, you probably did too. When you were coming to Him, again, we were tempting Him. We were testing Him. Uh, we were doing all these things, but I don't. I no longer want to debate God in my life. I don't want to be like Jacob and wrestle with Him and, and, and throw my hip out of socket. You know what I mean? I know that God is there, and I know that God has set up a plan, and as soon as I discern what that plan is, and as soon as I cooperate with that plan... It's going to begin to mature me, and I'm going to have guidance. I'm going to have provision. I'm going to have a, uh, a calling. My destiny will be fulfilled. When I stand in front of the living God, he's going to say, Scott, well done, good and faithful servant. He's not going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Now, in 1994, on the bucket shoots at Las Vegas, yeah, he would have said that to me. Why? Because I was caught up in works. I didn't have a commitment to him. I wasn't in a, in a covenant with him, and my heart was not guarded. And I was trying to know uh, the pro rodeo sports news more than I knew the word of God. And so what would I get? Confusion. I would get close, but I would never just have enough to get me over. And you know the story in 97. He certainly got me over uh, and showed me in the world that, that he could use, use uh, my life as my platform today. And I don't say that pridefully or boasting but even as an athlete or who, who much is given and much is required is we are to use our platforms for the living God we are to tell people about Jesus we're to say look at my life that was me before I came to Christ and now this is me after Christ amen I would much rather I'm more at peace with Scott today having made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life than ever I was trying to strive for gold buckles and, and identity and popularity and, and all of those things. Those are empty bottom. But Christ's word is most powerful. Amen? So we know they even try to doubt God's words. What does the Bible say about defending the truth? You see, 1 Peter 3.15, we read that earlier. 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you a reason of your hope that is in you with meekness and fear. See, God said, don't forget where you came from, but in all meekness, in all humility and fear, reverential fear for God, say, Jesus changed my life. I know today that my, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I know if I was to be taken off of this planet at this moment, that I would be in the presence of God and I would live and dwell with Him forever. Everybody want, I want to know that everybody uh, watching this today has made that kind of commitment and, and understands that because you, you got to be living and operating in that belief and not, not what the world is piping down the, down the drains to us. Amen? Uh, knowing the truth protects us from being influenced by un- Biblical teachings. Listen to this real quick. I charge you, this is 2 Timothy 4. We've already hit on it a couple times. This is about preaching the word. I charge you, therefore, before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convent, uh, convince rebuke, exhort, and with all long suffering and teachings, for the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to their fable, fables. Wow. If that's not an illustration of kind of recapping what we've been talking about, they will not no longer give attention to sound doctrine. They want their own belief systems in their churches, in their hearts, and in their different places. And I'm not trying to sound hard on churches. I'm just here to tell you there are churches that are in the Word of God. There are churches that teach things so traditionally, so far from the things of God that that it is a, a religious setting. 
And we're talking this morning about a relationship. Church is where we must go. Church is where we get fellowship. Church is where we worship. Church is where we interact. Even today, we need to have churches in the midst of these situations. But in the most persecuted time, a long ago, there were house churches. There was Bible studies at Cornelius' house. There was things that were going on, biblically speaking, years ago that we're just now tapping into uh, or coming back to that foundation as well. So the trick is, is to put God's Word in your heart so that when you speak and you believe, you don't even have to have it in front of your eyes. You put it into your heart, it can come out because if you're in a bad situation, instantly the Holy Spirit can reveal it to you and you can overcome that matter. Amen? Man, I'm, I'm just reminded of POWs in war. They said they had one little song that they could hang on to and they sung that song for 10, 15 years and they, and they survived. Their physical body survived because their spiritual body was stronger than their physical body and they endured until somebody came and got them. Jesus is coming to get you and I. Amen. Um, our values are virtually important. We got about 10 minutes here and we'll be done. But our values are virtually important because they affect every areas of our every area of our life. What do you value? What you give attention to will survive. What you starve, if you starve negative and, and, and bad reports, if you don't give attention to those, you don't water them, they won't grow. You want to water the seeds of God. You want to begin to cultivate those. You want to believe them. You want to confess them, memorize the scripture. Uh, Joshua 1.9 said, meditate on the word of God day and night so that uh, everything that you do will then be successful. You see, people want to be successful. You can't be a positive thinker. You can't be a, a, a guru of trying to control your mind and then have the victory and the principles of God's promises uh, in your life. God gave you a mind. You should be positive with it, but you should know the Word of God as much as you know your positive thinking books. Amen? If you want to be positive, get into the Scripture and start saying things like, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. See, that's positive, but it's also honoring God. Why? Because I'm saying his word back to him. Amen? We all need to do that. We need to have that boldness in our lives. For the most part, our thoughts determine our actions. As a follower of Christ, you should develop your belief system based on the authority of God. And that was my message to you this morning. Know what you believe, why you're believing it, how you're believing it. Because if you're believing something, you're also not believing what is offered. And that would be a good thing because we're not the authority in this world. You need to be wise. You need to be prepared. You need to listen to the news. But you don't need to let that stuff drop down into your spiritual heart because what will happen is that will produce fear and many other things. How do you know what uh, what we believe, uh, excuse me, let me say that again. How does knowing what we believe help us? And I'm trying to wrap this up. Uh, to, pre uh, to prevent us from being misled. So again, if you know what you're believing, that'll keep you from being lied to and misled uh, in your life. And the thing that is going to be the highest authority, we read that in 2 Timothy, is to be ready to give a report uh, if somebody asks you, why can you be so happy and, and so je uh, zealous in the time of trouble? It's because you say, I'm not dependent upon the, the things of this world. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I know that God loves me, that God has called me, and that He protects us from um, the intimidation that is out there in the world. See, the Apostle Paul encouraged the believers not to fear. I'm encouraging you today not to fear, to be full of wisdom, to be wise, to know what's going on around you and then know how to deal with it. We deal with it from the Word of God and, and, and the power thereof. So those who are grounded in God's Word can confidently stand against the world that mocks and that attacks us and our faith. I believe with all my heart the things that we're currently in today in the year 2020, there's a lot of things coming against us from every angle. 
But if you'll apply what I'm teaching here today, and you will begin to sanctify your hearts, guard your minds, begin to be a person of conviction, you will be strong in Christ Jesus. And, and, the, and, and, and what our children will be strong. Our country will be strong, and that's what we want. Just a few more things, and I'll wrap this up. So to prepare us for answering sincere questions, Jesus said, Preach the gospel to the entire world, the Great Commission, Matthew 28. Uh, people may not want to hear the truth, but their eternal destiny depends upon it. They may criticize and talk badly about you, but many times those same individuals are going to begin to seek you out and they're going to ask you for your help. I got to say this. I remember one year at a rodeo about this time of year, California, I believe it was Red Bluff. And a lot of my friends out there, I was raised up, in, you know, living in Texas. And I went back out there and rodeoed. And I remember walking by the grandstands and a couple of my buddies, they were drinking their beer. And when I walked by, they put their beers behind their back in. And I tell this story, I was thinking of it because it fits so perfectly right here, but it, it was almost like it scared me because, you know, I wanted to, to talk to them and witness to them. And certainly I, you know, was never, uh, I didn't ostracize them in any way or anything like that. But it made me realize that the God and the anointing that he had given me and the way that I conducted my new life had that kind of powerful. I didn't ask them to put their beard they just kind of did that out of respect or they didn't want to have me think bad. I would have never thought bad. I would have sat down right next to them and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with them because I remember where I came from. I was lost. I was wayward. I was in confusion. I was in corruption. I was in all those kind of things. I was tormented in my own heart and my own mind. And, and, and these kind of messages that I'm sharing with you today are what put your mind and your heart together to be complete on the spiritual man. The physical man, the five senses, if they lead you, you'll fall emotionally. And those aren't sure. Those aren't strong. But the belief system, to change what you believe, will change the fruit of your life. Amen? So I just want to say this. Can you defend your beliefs on the basis of the principles found in God's Word? And if not, you have you left yourself vulnerable for false teachings and temptations or satanic attacks over your life and ill-equipped to defend your faith or share the plans of salvation with the lost. Prepare yourself to defend yourself with biblical principles. Then you will make a difference in this world, and those, uh, those needs will, of hope can only be found in Christ Jesus. Amen? I want to read one scripture that I wrote down right here, and then I want to pray with you today. I pray that this message has inspired you. We're right at one hour. We don't want to go long, but as I as I read as I wrote this down, I want you to kind of think about tying up this scripture on the end. First Kings, uh, chapter eight and verse fifty six says this: Daily dwell on God's promises to you. When are you supposed to dwell on God's promises? Daily. Didn't say just on Sunday mornings. Daily, hourly, even. Every other minute, you know, when you first become a Christian, there's some stuff in there that's coming out and, and, and things that need to be dealt with. And so daily dwell on God's promises to you. Hide them in your heart and always remember, not, uh, not one word has failed of all of His good promises. Not one word has failed of God's promises. I am the same yesterday, today, today and forever. Amen. I'm so excited that I had a chance to bring this message to you today. I want to pray with you right now that if you don't have this kind of boldness in your life, this kind of thought patterns uh, that, that you give place to, or maybe you know that you should have them, I just want to simply pray with you so that you can have peace with God and that you can come into His now, His saving grace and that He can help you over those areas in your life. And as I agree and I lose my faith with your faith, I believe that God is faithful and He will perform good things in your life. He will help you. I can't help you other than agree with you in faith to stand on His Word. You know, His Word simply says that none of us would ever come into the kingdom of God without making Jesus the Lord of our life. And that's the whole reason why we teach the Word of God is to say, Lord, forgive me. I've not been walking with you. I want to walk with you. So today, will you pray that prayer? 
Maybe some of you need to rededicate your life. Maybe this message has, has kind of bared witness with your spirit to where you've been allowing things to come out of your mouth that's contrary to God's word and it's causing confusion. It's causing anger. It's causing things that's not what <coughs> the results that you wanted to have in your life. And so if you're faithful to ask God, God will perform his work in you. As we meditate on his word every day, his promises will not come back void. Amen. I want to pray with you right now. Father, I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you right now, Father God, that you are ministering to your children. Father, thank you for showing me the importance as I delivered this word today that my belief system is most important right now to believe your word and not this world. Father, I stand with those that need to make you Jesus, make you Jesus Lord of their life. So if there's anybody that needs to make Jesus the Lord of their life, just simply say right now, say, Jesus, come into my heart. Please forgive me. I am a sinner. I believe that you raised God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And I want you, Lord God, to lead my life. I've heard the word this morning. I believe the word. And I want to be a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Lord, I love you. Help me to see myself the way you see me. Thank you, Lord. Now I want to pray for those of you right now that may just having challenging times in the, in the weeks ahead. Father, I come in agreement with my brothers and sisters that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Father, I thank you right now that, that for the, the needs financially, physically, spiritually, every area of life has been confirmed through your word. Father, I send your word to your people right now by the mighty blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for performing your word. Thank you, Father, that it will not come back and, and, and not accomplish what you send it to do. Father, I pray for every person watching this right now, those that just need hope. Father, I speak blessing. I speak healing. I speak victory over their life. I speak callings and dreams and aspirations, Lord God. May you meet them right where they're at as they come to you, as we humble ourselves before you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Protect our country. Be with our leadership. Be with Israel, Lord God. Be with America. Help us to do our part. Let us boldly confess our freedoms in Christ Jesus. Let us walk uprightly before you. May revival start with us and spread abroad. I thank you right now, Father, as we wrap this message up to you. Be the honor and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, I'm excited. Uh, many of you know that if uh, you want to learn a little bit more about the ministry, just go to westernharvestministries.com, uh, scottmendes.com, conqueringthebeast.com. But we love you. Thank you for being our partners and our friends. If you have questions or other needs, just put them in the, in the, in the, in the correspondence here or send us an email, and we'll get right back to you. We love you guys. Enjoy your afternoon, and remember, be bold in Christ. Tell them why you're confident and how you can be confident and uh, with hope in these challenging times. We love you. God bless you, and we'll see you down the road.